Fortunately, there are people all over the planet with ideas that might just make it happen. So far, there's no shortage of intriguing ideas when it comes to harnessing sources of energy, ones that don't require a shovel, a pickaxe or a drill. I've seen how it's possible to capture the power of the sun and the sea. But what about the wind? Well, for that, there's only one thing for it. A weekend in Amsterdam. If there's a nation that understands the power of the wind, it's the Dutch. Holland, after all, is the home of the windmill. And there's one there, look. As you can see, they have wholeheartedly embraced the modern equivalent, the wind turbine. I'm not exactly sure that they're going to inspire a new school of Dutch masters, but it must be acknowledged that they are about 40 times as efficient as those old ones. Trouble is, relying on the wind for energy means relying on a force that actually isn't that reliable. Because even here, in gloriously flat Holland, the strength of the wind only generates a meaningful amount of electricity about 25% or so of the time. And the problem is actually the height of the windmills. They tend to stick up anywhere between 80 and 200 feet into the air, but in fact, to work their best, they should really be about 25,000 feet off the ground. Let me explain. It all began in late 1944, when some rather fiendish bomb-laden balloons started appearing over the west coast of America. No one believed it at the time, but they had actually come all the way from Japan. The Japanese had discovered the jet stream, a high-speed, high-altitude wind that circled the planet. The balloon unit has a paper gas bag, 64 rope shrouds about 40 feet long, and an automatic ballasting and firing control. It was a desperately cunning device. An altimeter kept the balloon in the jet stream by releasing sandbags if it dropped too low. Tragically, the bomb balloons did kill six people, a preacher's wife and five Sunday school children. But the power of the high altitude jet stream had been exploited for the first time. The reason I've come to Holland is that the Dutch are finally ready to shake off the centuries-old stigma of the windmill and instead attempt to harness the energy of the high-altitude winds. And a lot of this is down to the work of that man, Wubo Ockels. He is a professor, he's a physicist, he's a pilot and he's an astronaut. He was the first Dutchman in space. He really was. There he is, look. But most importantly of all, he's a kite enthusiast. Yes, this clever fellow has ditched his spaceship and his moustache and, daft as it sounds, plans to harness the phenomenal power of the jet stream using kites. Nice. That's uh, accelerating. Now, you, now it's getting power. We're talking high-tech computer-controlled kites made of Kevlar and nylon and a high tensile steel cable. What gave you the idea for the kites thing? Uh, a long time ago, you know, as, as a child, I, I had a kite and, and, and you want to get it higher and so you just roll out the line and, and it wanted to hold it in my hand and, and I let it go a little bit and then I couldn't stop it anymore and it burned my finger, you know, it was really, really hurt. And you realise how much energy is in a kite, it's amazing. Well, how high do you think you could go? Are you, uh, this, this uh, with, one kite, with one kite, which is here, we will go just a few hundred metres. Right. And it goes up and up and up. But the trick is that we can control it, this kite. This is not a dumb kite, this is a smart kite, which is controlled here by, by these fellows with, with these joysticks and, and also with the computer. And then we can make a kite fly basically like an airplane. And so what we do is we go up like a kite and they come down like an airplane. So it pulls strong when it goes up and generates energy and it doesn't really use energy when it comes down and so it repeats and that's the way we can get energy. Whilst these kites are doing well, they're just proving the concept because for his next trick, Wubo intends to send them into the upper atmosphere. 
it's quite a far-fetched yeah. idea. And you're just used to flying kites at the seaside. The kite would go up to high altitude, yeah. you're saying maybe 9 or 10 kilometres. Yeah. So it's in the jet stream, or yeah. the beginnings of the jet stream. It flies up, pulls the cable, yeah. turns the drum, makes the electricity, then it will glide back down, then yeah. it will pull again, and you'll yeah. have a whole series of kites working yeah. yeah. synchronised so that you've got constant supply. That's the end idea. But those winds don't go everywhere. They go predominantly over England and over the Netherlands and over Denmark. So we, we, we have a luxury. We have more wind than the rest of the world. So we're wind rich. In we this are part wind rich, yes. You could, you could even imagine that in some future, you know, we, we next to the OPEC countries, which will be outdated then, we'll have uh, WEPEC countries, you know, wind energy producing and exporting countries. So can you put a figure on how much power there is in the wind? If you want to understand here, you know, above the atmosphere, how much energy is available, then, then what you can do is you can hold your hand, and then with my eyeball, I, I kind of see a cone of air above there. The amount of power in that cone of air is the same as what the whole metal is using. So, I mean, just in that bit of sky there, yeah. I'm probably getting most of Europe sorted, yeah. am I? There yeah. you go. Do we need just a few more hands, and we have whole Europe. Greece. Germans need quite a lot because they're extravagant. <laughs> but that's still only that bit of sky, and that's all of Europe powered with kites. Yeah. I'm not sure I quite believe it. <laughs> I know this all sounds terribly far-fetched, but I think that might be because in our minds we associate brightly coloured kites with the seaside and Winnie the Pooh and Mary Poppins and all that sort of thing. But once you start to look at the physics and the arithmetic of it, it makes a great deal of sense. I mean, if you have a certain amount of air moving at a certain speed and filling a certain size kite, then that will generate that much energy that can be turned into electricity. These are physical absolutes. And I'm beginning to feel that these sort of new age energy people actually have a point. Nature has given us a gift here. It gives us the wind blowing and the sun shining, and they've been doing that for millions and millions of years. And what have we done with them so far? Used them for holidays. That's about it. The trouble with all these renewable resources is that they're stuck with the stigma of alternative energy, which sounds really wet. And the thing is, it's not alternative. It's just plain energy. The only alternative part is the sort of imagination it takes to harness it.